have here is the latest generation of WRX, and while it doesn't have an STI cousin, at least for now, it does improve heavily on the old car. So let's grab the keys and see what's up with the new Subaru WRX. I know what you're all wanting me to say, and no, it's not my favorite looking WRX of all time, but behind the wheel, it more than makes up for it. Let me show you what I mean. Housekeeping. We have a new 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer four cylinder making 271 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. All that power goes through six speeds and three pedals, and zero to 60 is good for the mid five seconds. Okay, so there are the numbers, but numbers really only make up part of the story. Interestingly, Savage Geese actually had this thing dynoed, and it came back with the same horsepower number and actually less wheel torque than it did last year's, and yet, it feels faster. Yes, there's a bit of boost lag, but the torque comes in and peaks like a thousand RPM sooner, and then it stays there all the way up. The way that this power is calibrated in this car is so much more predictable and so much more refined than any WRX I've ever driven before. Okay, outside boost, the engine is fairly gutless, but once the boost hits, you feel like you're doing some big wave surfing, riding the barrel of torque all the way to redline. And then when you change gear, there's no annoying rev hang. The shifter is light and it's long, but the clutch has got a nice defined bite point kind of in the middle of the take up. And what it results in is something that feels easy to get settled in with. I will say though, there are two deficiencies here. There is no rev matching on downshift. And with the clutch in at idle, when you're just standing still, the reverb is pretty terrible with the windows down. And honestly, the car is pretty quiet, but let's be honest, the first thing anyone is going to do to their car is slapping an exhaust on it and the lack of rev matching makes you work on your drive craft, which is kind of the point. From there, we talk about dynamics. And while the CVT gets a 45-55 torque split, the manual is good old symmetrical 50-50 all-wheel drive. Now dynamically, Subaru has done a lot to this car and the result is that the driving dynamics and characteristics shine as the best thing about this car. First of all, Subaru have focused heavily on the retuned suspension. You have more wheel travel, but added body control. You've got a rear anti-roll bar that's mounted straight to the chassis. The chassis itself is 28% more rigid, and the Dunlops have gripped pretty well this week. The result is something that feels a little stiff, but not harsh. The ride is much more sophisticated than it ever has been before, but my favorite thing is the front end on this thing and the turn-in on the car. They've gone to a dual pinion steering rack and moved the motor to the other side of the rack. And what it translates to is no feeling of losing power around mid-corner and a smoother and more intuitive front end. They've also changed the tires for a more aggressive tip-in and it should be more stable at speed. It also helps that magically this year's premium trim is about 30 pounds lighter than last year's. I have to be honest, I was not expecting this car to be as fun and refined behind the wheel as it is, and it manages to inject that sophistication without sacrificing the character. But you will still want to fit an exhaust right away. Let's step outside. Okay, I gotta be honest. I know that the WRX cult is super strong, and I never really kind of understood that, but having spent a week with this, I think I'm starting to get it. The idea that you can get this amount of performance and all wheel drive capability for like the low $30,000 mark, I'm definitely starting to understand. But we do need to address the elephant in the parking lot. And that's the way this thing looks. Whenever they release a new WRX, the people are never initially satisfied. And I get it with this one now more than ever with its plastic cladding diaper all around the car. However, it serves a purpose. On the plastic, there are little hexagons that smooth airflow. Mixed with the underbody being more covered, the car is more aerodynamic and more stable at speed. I do like the solar orange paint, though if it were me buying the car, I would probably have it in black to hide some of that cladding around the body. Up front, you have a massive functional hood scoop feeding the bigger 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer. The headlights do seem a little bit small and don't even have LED running lights. On a trim, Subaru is calling, quote, premium, although you do have LED fog lights. Around the side, the cladding continues and encircles the 18-inch gunmetal wheels, wrapped in a nice set of Dunlop tires. The wheel arches are a more geometric squared-off shape to convey aggression. The profile is fairly conventional sedan. Of course, we don't get a hatch for this generation again, and we don't get a Lavorg like they do in Japan. Of course, around back, there is more cladding with some fake arrow, but you still have a subtle molded-in rear wing. And to put a bow on it, you get a nice crushed glass effect in your taillight, which is very Mercedes. So overall, I'd say spec'd out the correct way, i.e. in like the gunmetal gray or the black paint color that kind of hides some of the exterior cladding, I'd say you have a pretty handsome car. Let's step inside. 
Ah, the interior of a Subaru WRX. Not historically a place that's been super plush, luxurious, and opulent, but you know what? For, for this generation, that continues. In fairness though, this is the second lowest of the four trims, and I've heard the range topping GT is quite nice. For me though, it's all about the materials. There's a lot of plastics, which some are cosplaying as other materials, but ultimately the design and build is solid enough to justify the low $30,000 price tag. In terms of tech, you have a semi-digital cluster, which is fine. You have no head-up display on this premium, but the thing that dominates the experience, as is all too common these days, is the massive 11.6-inch Starlink screen. Of course, it's a vertical orientation, as is the way now. Everything is in the screen now, and honestly, it's fine. The system doesn't have super modern graphics, but it's quick, and much like BMW's iDrive 8 or Mercedes' new MBUX system, the climate lives in the bottom half of the screen. No 360 camera, but the resolution on the reverse camera is fine. You do have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and the manual equip premium doesn't really get many of the eyesight goodies, but this is, after all, the driver's spec car. You do get heated seats on this premium, but the seats are manual adjust only. There's also no sunroof, so between that and the manual seats, I can see where the 30 pounds is saved from last year. The rear seats are great, though. Very comfy, spacious enough for a six-foot person, and then there's the trunk, which is also very large, and can expand 60-40. So while it's not packed with every piece of bleeding edge modern technology, and it's not trimmed with 14 karat gold accents, this thing does the most important thing that an interior is supposed to do, and it's make sense, be ergonomic, and be livable. Although I will say that the armrest in your center console isn't exactly where I'd want it to be. But with that being said, I think it's a good time to get into the final thoughts. So there's the new WRX, and sure, it's easy to fault it in certain places, but when you think about the fact that you can get this driving experience and all-wheel drive for the low $30,000, that's not something anyone else can claim. I have to say, I'm impressed. So thanks to Subaru for letting us have a go, and we'll see you in the next one.